Week one in the NFL is always a little wacky and ripe for overreaction. Is Aaron Rodgers trying to force a trade? Will the Bills come to regret the Josh Allen contract? We're not going to lose our heads just yet, but let's dive into some important takeaways from the first weekend of football. Sit back, relax, and take this in. Ooh, baby, where do we start first? The Arizona Cardinals front seven absolutely destroyed the Tennessee Titans offensive line. The Cardinals pressured quarterback Ryan Tannehill on 41.5% of his dropbacks per next-gen stats, with edge rusher Chandler Jones totaling seven pressures and five sacks on 28 pass rushes. Two of Jones' pressures caused lost fumbles, and Jones became the 17th player in NFL history to reach 100 sacks in his first 10 seasons. That is a perfect way to segue to our Take This In trivia segment, where we're asking, who is the Cardinals all-time leader in sacks? The answer is Curtis Greer, who notched 69 and a half sacks with the Cardinals from 1980 to 1987. And before we jump back in, I just wanted to tell you guys to subscribe to our channel. You can help us get one step closer to 100,000 subscribers. Now back to the video. Quarterback Kyler Murray looked a lot like he did before injuring his shoulder in week 11 last season. On throws of 10 or more air yards, he was 8 of 16 for 151 yards and three touchdowns. The Cardinals were 7 for 13 on third down, and they had three touchdown drives covering 75 yards or more. The NFC West is the league's best division. It's true the Seattle Seahawks, San Francisco 49ers, and Los Angeles Rams all have recent playoff pedigrees, but the Cardinals just served notice that perhaps they shouldn't be overlooked either. And what happened to the Titans' offense? With Ryan Tannehill, Derrick Henry, and A.J. Brown already in the fold, the Titans traded for Julio Jones this offseason, setting themselves up to have one of the league's most prolific offenses. Then Sunday's season opening faceplant happened. The Titans couldn't run the ball. Henry averaged just 3.4 yards on 17 carries and couldn't protect Tannehill. They averaged 3.9 yards per play, and by the time Tennessee orchestrated its first scoring drive, it was down 17-0. If there's one reason to doubt this offense, it's the presence of offensive coordinator Todd Downing, who was promoted from tight ends coach after Arthur Smith got the head coaching gig in Atlanta. Smith was credited with cooking up a creative scheme that revived Tannehill's career and finally got the most out of Henry. Downing's only experience as a coordinator came in 2017 with the Raiders, when the unit he ran slipped from 7th in offensive DVOA to 13th, while the passing offense falling from 6th to 13th. Given all the skillful personnel at his disposal, there's every reason to expect things will get better. If that doesn't happen though, it will certainly be a tremendous disappointment and a wasted opportunity. Maybe it's the season of eating a W. Let's go. That's a W. Let's eat one. Let's eat one. That's a W. It doesn't taste like anything. The New Orleans Saints dismantled the Green Bay Packers 38 to three. Jameis Winston posted a sterling EPA dropback of 0.85 and five touchdown passes, while Aaron Rodgers lumbered to a EPA dropback of minus 0.43 without reaching the end zone, just as everyone expected, I guess. Winston's high risk, high reward style figured to be quite the contrast from the conservative, efficient approach Drew Brees played with in recent years. But under Sean Payton's tutelage, Winston played within himself and attempted just two deep throws per next gen stats. He also led scoring drives on six of New Orleans' first seven possessions, with two of them stretching on for 15 plays. The Winston we last saw tossing 30 interceptions two years ago also didn't throw a single pick in this one. That's exactly the kind of style of play the Saints want him to play. Josh Allen wasn't awful in the Bills' loss to the Steelers, but his play more closely resembled what he produced earlier in his career rather than the 2020 version of himself. It's because of that one year when he propelled the Bills to the AFC title game that he earned himself a ginormous contract. Allen didn't turn the ball over, but his EPA dropback was minus 0.12. Perhaps more worryingly, his completion percentage over expected, a next-gen stat that measures accuracy, was minus 7.1. For comparison's sake, Allen's ex-comp differential in 2019 was minus 3.7. His rookie year, it was minus 7.7. On the bright side, Allen was facing one of the league's best defenses, including a Steelers pass rush that generated a lot of pressure without having to blitz. The Bills also had a pump block for a touchdown and called a bizarre option pitch that got blown up on fourth and one near midfield. None of that was Allen's fault. Long story short, please do not panic about Josh Allen just yet. 
Welcome to LA Matthew Stafford and all of his kids. If anyone's still wondering why the Rams traded for Stafford, Sunday night's bashing of the Chicago Bears tells you all you need to know. Freed from a decade-long purgatory in Detroit and operating in Sean McVay's whiz-bang scheme while surrounded by gobs of talent, Stafford was dang near perfect. 20 of 26 for 321 yards, three touchdown passes, zero interceptions, and a sizzling 0.61 EPA dropback. Stafford was pressured just four times on 27 dropbacks, and his XCOM differential was a robust 9.7% per next-gen stats. Stafford did a lot with design rollouts and used play action on 29.6% of his throws, a mark change since he had only play fake 23.7% of the time last season with the Lions per PFF. Stafford's 56-yard touchdown pass to Cooper Cup was schemed so open that no defender was within 11 yards of the wideout when he caught the ball. Things were that easy. It's only one game, naturally, but by all indications, Stafford is exactly the kind of quarterback McVay and the Rams needed to get this offense humming again. Lastly, let's look at how the rookie QBs did. Here are the stat lines for Trevor Lawrence, Zach Wilson, and Mac Jones, who all made their first career starts in their first career NFL games. Yes, Trey Lance got into the contest for the 49ers and even threw a touchdown pass on his lone attempt, and Justin Fields ran for a score in the Bears' loss to the Rams, but both quarterbacks were used sparingly in situational spot duty. All three of the rookies who started, lost. Lawrence's Jacksonville Jaguars looked completely wayward while getting blown out by the lowly Houston Texans, while Wilson began to find a bit of a groove after getting knocked around early and dealing with multiple drops. Jones marched the Patriots into the red zone with a little more than three minutes to play, only to have running back Damian Harris fumble. Next week, Lawrence faces off against the Denver Broncos and their solid defense, while Wilson and Jones go at it for the first time in the New York Jets home opener. And just so we don't get roasted by Philly fans, Sunday went about as well as the Eagles could have hoped for Jalen Hurts, even if the Falcons are more of a junior varsity tune-up. Hurts flashed a lot of legit two-way ability. He threw for 264 yards, three touchdowns, and zero interceptions. He also rushed for 62 yards on seven carries and completed passes to seven different receivers with Devontae Smith and Jalen Reger, combining for 12 catches, 121 yards, and two touchdowns. Tougher times are yet to come, but this was an ideal way to start the post Carson Wentz era. It was a wild first week of action, capped off by an unreal overtime thriller in Vegas, where the Raiders stayed alive against Lamar Jackson's Ravens. And we still have 17 weeks left. Let the overreactions begin.